Hey everybody, this is Tech Guy Charlie. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you the crucial settings and features that you should tweak and turn on on your new Galaxy S24 Ultra to take full advantage of your new phone. Now, before we start, the first thing I'm going to do is drop down the notification panel and switch on dark mode. This is going to change the theme of the phone from white to black, which is going to be easier on the eyes and is also going to make filming the video a lot easier. Alright, so what I want you guys to do is head on into the settings and then scroll down to device care. Inside, you want to tap on the performance profile and change this to light. And this is going to do two things. It's going to increase your battery life and it's going to make the phone run cool because the light mode prioritizes the battery life and cooling efficiency over processing speed. And no, you're not going to notice any big difference because the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is insanely fast even in the light processing mode. Now, if you want to prolong the lifespan of your S24 Ultra's battery, you want to tap on battery in the device care and once you're inside, head on into battery protection and switch this on. You see, the thing is, keeping your battery full at 100% charge for a long time can reduce its lifespan. And these three options will help you prolong the lifespan of your phone's battery. So the basic option charges the battery to 100% then stops until the battery level drops down to 95 and then once again it will charge back to 100%. The adaptive option is the best because this will charge the battery to 80% while you are asleep and it will charge to 100% just before you wake up. So this is going to be very useful if you leave your phone plugged in overnight. And lastly, you've got the maximum protection, which will always limit the maximum charge level to 80%. Ideally, you want to keep it on maximum protection, but sometimes 80% is not adequate. So in that case, you want to switch this to adaptive. So let's go back to the device care menu and here tap on auto optimization and then auto restart. Inside, switch on auto restart when needed. Now your phone will automatically restart whenever it detects that it's having performance issues. And if you'd like, you can also set your own restart schedule. I usually prefer the phone to restart on Monday 3 a.m. so that the phone is nice and fresh, ready for the week. Now, one feature which is completely unnecessary and should be switched off is the RAM Plus. And you'll find it inside memory and there it is. So this feature uses the main flash memory as the system RAM. By default, this is set to 8GB which I think is completely unnecessary on a phone like the S24 Ultra because you've already got 12GB of dedicated system RAM. So it's a good idea to switch this off because you're gonna gain 8GB of additional storage and it will also save your flash memory from additional wear and tear. Okay, so we're back after a restart and now let's enable a crucial security feature. So what you want to do is go to the settings, then scroll down to security and privacy. Inside, you'll find a feature called auto blocker. What you want to do is switch this on. So when enabled, this feature is going to keep your phone safe by number one, blocking apps from unauthorized sources. Number two, it checks apps for malicious activity. And number three, it blocks command via USB. And moreover, it also seems to have some sort of malware protection for messages and the ability to block software updates via USB. The Galaxy S24 Ultra comes with a lot of cool new AI features, but by default, they are switched off. So you'll need to head on into the settings, then scroll down to advanced features. Inside, tap on advanced intelligence. And here you want to enable the AI features that you want to use. For example, let's enable the generative edit for the photo editor. So check this out. Now when you edit your photos, you will be able to use the generative edit feature in the photo editor. And this is a super powerful tool that we can use to move the objects in the photo around. And the phone is automatically gonna fill in the empty space. So this was before and after. We can also use the generative edit tool to straighten crooked photos without the need of cropping them. And once again, the phone will fill in the gaps on the edges and it's just like magic. I absolutely love this. So yeah, you want to go through this list and enable whichever AI features that you want to use. I also like the note assist in Samsung notes. 
Basically, this will allow you to auto format, summarize, correct spelling, and translate your notes into a different language. Very, very useful. Now let's make some crucial changes to the gallery. So the first thing we're going to do is enable a feature that lets you scroll in full screen. Look how awesome the gallery looks. So if you want your gallery to look like this while you are scrolling, go to the gallery settings by tapping on these three lines and then select settings. Over here, enable full screen scrolling. So after enabling this, you will be able to scroll in full screen through your gallery. It just makes the gallery look super cool. Oh, and one more thing that I've noticed is that by default, the gallery does not show you every album that's on your phone. You'll have to tap on view all to see all your albums. And this can get very confusing at times. However, you can tap on these three dots and then tap on select essential albums and check the boxes of the albums that you want to see when you are in the album tab of your gallery. Now, if you don't like this feature, you can always switch it off by tapping on the hamburger menu and then going to the gallery settings and switching off select essential albums. Now the gallery is going to show you all the folders or albums that are on your phone. However, you still have the option to hide individual albums by going into this menu. So it's kind of pointless to have two similar features. So why not switch one of these off to avoid confusion? Now, when you change the wallpaper for the very first time, what I want you guys to do is pinch in on the home screen and then go to wallpaper and style. Tap on color palette and enable this feature. And what this feature does is that it picks out the colors that are in the wallpaper and uses them as the theme of your phone. So look at the preview and pick the color palette that you like. Once you are done, you will notice that the theme of your phone will match the colors of your wallpaper, which is really awesome. You know what? This particular wallpaper looks really nice on the Titanium Violet S24 Ultra. And by the way, you can grab this wallpaper from my Flickr account. The clock also looks kind of boring, so to change this, keep your finger in an empty area on the lock screen and then unlock your phone. And you will be presented with a live preview of the lock screen. Here you can tap on the clock and pick something that suits your style. I'm gonna pick this and also change the color and the font. Looks a lot better, right? And there is just so much customizability on the lock screen itself that now you can even add a widget on the lock screen itself. There are a ton of these to choose from, like you can have the phone show you your upcoming events, alarm, pedometer, and even the weather. You know what? This is why I love Samsung's One UI. There is just so much that you can customize and play around with. So I think I need to address this because the other day someone commented that you cannot see the messages on the lock screen without tapping on the notification icon. Well, that is kind of true. However, what you don't know is that you can change how the phone shows you the notification. To change this, once again, we have to keep our finger on the lock screen and then unlock the phone. Here, tap on the notification icons and change this from icons only to details. So yeah, now your phone is going to show you the notifications right on the lock screen. However, you might have noticed that the messages are still hidden. So if you want to see the actual contents of the messages, you will need to head on into the settings and then tap on notifications. Inside, tap on lock screen notifications and then on the gear icon in front of show content. Here you want to choose the apps that can show you content in the lock screen notifications. So I've got this enabled for WhatsApp and now it's going to show us the message contents of WhatsApp on the lock screen. So yeah, this is a personal choice. You want to change this setting as per your requirement. This is probably the most annoying thing ever, but when you press and hold the power button on your phone, you'll notice that it launches the Bixby personal assistant instead of showing you the menu which lets you restart or power off your phone. And if you're like me and if you don't use Bixby, then I would recommend changing the behavior of the power button to show you the power off menu instead of launching Bixby. So what you want to do is drop down the notification panel all the way down, then tap on the power button. Here, tap on side button settings. Now under press and hold, change to power off menu. And now the phone will show you the power off menu instead of launching Bixby. 
Samsung is using a new power efficient LTPO OLED on the S24 series. So now you've got a new feature that lets you show your lock screen wallpaper on the always on display with very minimal impact on the battery life. So that is awesome. And there are a few new features to play around with. I thought I might show you. So what you want to do is head on into the settings and scroll down to lock screen and AOD. Inside, tap on always on display. And as you can see, the settings for the always on display are totally different compared to previous Samsung smartphones because now you've got a new option to show the lock screen wallpaper and the option to erase the background which will let you save a little bit more battery. However, keep in mind that this only works with pictures of people or animals. They've also added a new setting in here which is the auto mode. This is gonna turn the always on display off whenever the phone detects that it's in your pocket, purse or a dark room. You can even keep your phone upside down to switch the always on display off which is quite useful. But usually I keep the always on display on tap to show but this time I'm gonna keep this on auto and see how this works out. You also might want to add the toggle for the always on display to your quick settings. So here what you want to do is tap on the pencil icon and then tap on edit for the full quick settings. And from the available buttons, drag and drop the always on display button here. And this is going to give you direct on and off toggle for the always on display. And speaking of the quick settings, you also might want to look for the quick share button and switch this on and set this to everyone. This enables a feature which is very similar to Apple AirDrop and this allows you to share any number of files including big ones with other Samsung smartphones. All you have to do is press on the share button and if quick share is enabled on the other phone, it's gonna automatically show up here. Just tap on the phone you wanna share with and quick share will automatically transfer the file onto the other phone. Super easy and awesome, right? And you can leave the quick share setting set to everyone because you have to manually accept the file if the contact is not there in your phone book. So it's pretty safe. It's really strange but the S24 Ultra does not come with a dedicated MP3 or a music player. So let's fix that by downloading Samsung Music from the Play Store. You know this used to come pre-installed on Samsung phones but for some reason Samsung decided not to include it on their newer smartphones. But yeah, this is a nice music player if you are not into streaming music from Spotify or Amazon Music. Samsung Galaxy smartphones have a feature that lights up the edges of the screen whenever the phone gets a new notification. And this makes the phone look awesome, especially at night. But by default, this feature is disabled so you will have to turn it on. Let me show you how. Alright, so drop down the notification panel and go to settings. Here tap on notifications. Inside, tap on notification pop-up style and make sure that this setting is set to brief. Otherwise, you will not be able to choose the edge lighting. So set this to brief and then tap on edge lighting style to choose the type of edge lighting that you want to see. Now there are plenty of edge lighting styles to choose from. My personal favorite is the glitter effect because this looks phenomenal. Once you select the effect, go to advanced and change the width from narrow to wide and duration from short to long. This makes the glitter effect a little bit thick and makes it last a little bit longer. And lastly, make sure show even while screen is off is enabled if you want to see the effect when the screen is off. I also feel like the UI elements are a little bit too big on the S24 Ultra. I mean, this is a 6.8 inch display and it feels like everything is a bit too zoomed in. But thankfully we can tweak that by going into the settings, then display. Inside you wanna head on into screen zoom and use this slider to make the items smaller or larger. You wanna use this to adjust everything according to what's comfortable according to you. But I prefer the smallest size because it's a big screen phone. And keep in mind this does not change the size of the font. For that you wanna head on into font size and style and change it from here. You can even grab more fonts from the Galaxy Store. My favorite is Samsung Sans which looks awesome. I also recommend hiding the navigation bar that appears at the bottom of the screen. The advantage of this is that it gives you more screen area for your content. Look how the keyboard fits properly. So what you want to do is go to settings, 
then display. Scroll down to navigation bar. Now inside here, change the navigation type from buttons to swipe gestures. Also, in addition to this, you want to head on into more options and then enable block gestures with S Pen, which will enable you to draw or write near the edges of the screen with the S Pen. So swipe gestures are awesome. It turns the edges of the screen into the back key, which makes it very easy to use the phone with one hand. So now swipe in from the edges to go back. Swiping up from the middle takes us to our home screen. And if you swipe up from the middle and hold, that's going to open up recents. And doing this gesture will let you go back and forth between your recent apps. And many of you guys have asked me about this keyboard. So I'm using Microsoft Swift key. It's got a couple of interesting features like theme, which lets you customize the keyboard according to your mood. And you've also got this swipe gesture input, which makes it very easy to type. And this keyboard comes pre-installed on the S24 Ultra. You just have to enable it. So go to settings, scroll down to general management. Here tap on keyboard list and default. Just enable Microsoft SwiftKey keyboard and then change the default keyboard to SwiftKey from here. And while you're here, make sure that you switch off keyboard button on navigation bar and show button to hide keyboard. If you don't, the keyboard will have a blank space at the bottom like this. So make sure that you switch both of these off if you want the keyboard to fit properly while using the navigation gestures. And I feel this keyboard is far superior to what Samsung has to offer. And if it doesn't come pre-installed on your phone, go ahead and download it from the Play Store. Also, the other day someone asked how do you disable the apps that show up in Recents. So when you are in this menu, tap on these three dots and then Settings. From here, turn off Show Recommended Apps. And now you won't see those apps in the Recent menu. Samsung smartphones have a feature called Edge Panels, and these give you easy access to your favorite apps, screenshot tool, and a lot more. Let me show you how to customize this. Okay, so the location of the Edge Panels is shown by this white line over here, and this is called the Edge Panel Handle. And you swipe in like this to open up the Edge Panels. Right now, there is only a single Edge Panel because we have to enable the other Edge Panels that I showed you. The way you do that is very easy, so open the edge panels and then tap on the gear icon that appears over here. That's gonna take you to the edge panel settings. So by default, only one edge panel will be enabled. So in addition to this, I want you guys to enable the smart select panel, the weather panel, tools, and the reminder edge panel. And these are just the basic edge panels on the phone. If you want more, you can always go to the Galaxy Store and download free edge panels from here. Now, while you're here, go back to the Apps Edge Panel and then tap on Edit. Then tap on these three dots and then enable Show App Names. So now you'll see the names of apps in the Apps Edge Panel instead of the icons. And finally, just drag and drop the apps that you use frequently to this list so you'll have easy access to them through the Apps Edge Panel. So check it out, now we have all of these different Edge Panels available for use. Look at this, it's even got a compass. By the way, you can also customize the edge panel handle. So what we are going to do is go back into the edge panel settings, tap on the back button, and here we are going to tap on handle. Now from here, you can also change the position of the handle so you can grab this and place the handle anywhere you like. You can also change its size and also make it completely transparent so that you don't have the handle line on the right side of your display but the handle is still there. So if you swipe in, you'll see that the edge panels will still open. All right, so let's stop here because this video is already like 20 minutes long. Stay tuned for the next video because in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to customize the home screen. All right, so thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.